filtering data is one of the more difficult aspects of working with Firebase. In this episode, I'm going to cover four different techniques that you can use to filter data by multiple values at the same time. The goal is to achieve similar results to what you would expect by using the WHERE clause in a SQL database. In this app, we have a collection of animals, and we want to be able to filter these animals by three different attributes at the same time. We want to filter by an exact string match for the family, for a weight range for the animal's weight, and a Boolean value for whether or not the animal is endangered. In the database, we just have a collection of animals, and each animal has the properties that we want to filter by. If you've worked with Angular Fire 2, you're probably used to making queries like this, where you return a Firebase list observable and pass a query to sort by a certain value. This works great when you want to filter by just one single value, but if you have multiple values, you have to take a different approach. The best option is to filter the list client side, that is, after you've received the data from Firebase. The main drawback is that you have to load the entire collection into memory, which may not work for larger data sets. In this example, I'm going to create a client-side filtering system that allows you to add and remove various filtering rules to your data. Start by importing the Angular Fire database, and we're also going to make extensive use of Lodash in this example. We set a variable for animals, which will always be the full dataset pulled from Firebase, and filtered animals will be a copy of it with the filter rules applied to it. This allows us to add and remove filters on the fly. Next, we set some variables for the attributes that we want to filter. Then we create another object that will keep track of the active filters applied to the dataset. During ng on init, we return the Firebase list observable and subscribe to it, and the value that it emits will be the animals variable. And then we apply any active filters to it. This allows us to keep the database in sync in real time. The next step is to actually filter the data. We do this using the lodash filter function. First, we pass it the full data set, and then we use another lodash function called conforms. Conforms takes an entire object of functions that return either true or false. This allows us to filter multiple attributes at the same time. Check out the full lesson link in the description if you want more detail than that. From there, we can create our first filter. I want to make these as reusable as possible, so I pass a property as an argument and a rule, which is the value that that property must conform to. In this app, every animal has a family property, so we can pass it that property and then set the rule to bird, and that'll return all the birds in the collection. We can add any filters of any degree of complexity using this technique. In this example, we filter all the values that are greater than the rule. You can add any logic to this function, it just has to return true or false. In this app, we're using it to filter the weight property on animals greater than a certain threshold. And the last filter we're gonna set up is a Boolean filter, this one operates a little bit different because if it's false, we want to remove the filter altogether. And if it's true, we can just return true. To remove a filter, all we have to do is delete that property from the filter's object. Now let's see how we have everything wired up in the HTML. We start by creating a select box and bind that to ng model and our family variable in the TypeScript. Then we can call the filter exact method, passing it the family property, as well as the family variable that's being set by ng model. To remove a filter, we just see if that family variable is defined, and if so, we allow the user to click a button that runs the remove filter method. For the weight greater than, we follow the same basic process, just passing it a different variable and different property name. At this point, you might notice how these filter methods can be reused on any infinite number of properties. And to show the animals, all we have to do is loop over the filtered animals variable. Now when we go back to the app, we have a basic client-side filtering system all set up. So what if your dataset is too large for client-side filtering? The next option would be to create composite keys. The idea behind this is to combine multiple key value pairs into a single key value pair. The main drawback is that it's only really practical for up to three properties. After that, you'll have way too many key value combinations to keep track of. If we were to implement this in our app, this is how the composite keys would look in the database. We would combine the keys and then combine their values, allowing us in an indirect way to query for multiple properties at once. Then we could use these keys to query the database with Angular Fire 2, just like normal. If you think this is the right approach for your app, there's also a library called QueryBase that does this for you automatically. It's experimental at this point, but might be something to look into. 
Another way to filter by multiple attributes in Firebase is to use a tag filtering strategy. In this case, you would denormalize your data to keep track of each item under a tag that it's associated with. This would allow you to pull all the items associated with a specific tag and then combine them together. You could either take the intersection or the union of those keys and then make a query for each item individually. You could use the intersection helper from Lodash and then make requests for Firebase object observables based on the keys that are returned. And the last option I'm going to talk about is using a third-party service such as Algolia or Elasticsearch. I made a couple videos recently about using Algolia with Angular 4 and Firebase. And if you're doing a lot of advanced filtering of your data, it's usually a good idea to outsource this to a third-party service. Data indexing is a rather high-maintenance and error-prone process, so mess around with third-party providers before trying to do the entire thing from scratch. That's it for advanced filtering with Firebase. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe, and consider joining our Slack team if you want to discuss this in more detail. And if you want to support the channel, become a pro member at angularfirebase.com for a free copy of my book, as well as one-on-one -on -one project consulting. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.